But I think we have Chuck Larson, our strategic projects managers on, manager online, and I just wanted to give a, a quick overview. This is this is um, a project that has had. It's now come together as one project, but it started as two, and then it, the initial project got added to, and now it's all one big giant project. So how it started was improvements to Lovers Lane, <clears throat> and as that project developed, a multi-use path became part of the project, and some pretty su significant drainage improvements became part of the project. As And you all recall that we had a discussion about that over the summer. And at, concurrently, the extension of a water main west of the air, of where the airport is extending, extended a water main, or just west of the airport, I'll say, um, was also starting. And it came to light that that project was going to impact Lover's Lane, so it made sense to turn this into one big project so that we're not tearing up a road, putting in a water line, and tearing up the road again, and putting in other things. So Chuck is going to give us an overview of where the project stands, what the timeline is. We do need more funding, and that is in the fiscal 24 um, capital project list. Chuck? Yep. Uh, thank you. Chuck Larson, Manager of Strategic Projects. Uh, Libby, I think you did a great overview. You know, you, you, all the bullet points I had on my list, uh, I think I checked those as you were speaking. Um, it, as Libby mentioned, you know, this is a project that's heavily focused on coordination. So tonight we're going to be, you know, uh, providing an update on the efforts and coordination across town departments and the consultants to coordinate the work. And we have a presentation put together. There are about a dozen slides that, you know, we're going to walk through and then really open it up to questions and answers. So if we have the presentation, loaded. This is the project website that we have right here. And uh, we're updating this with information as as we, we get it and post it. So. Next slide. All right, that, that covers that. We're going to start off the uh, first presentation with CDM Smith. And that'll be uh, Jim Drake, who's the project engineer. Thanks, Chuck. Can everybody hear me? Yep. All right. Yes. Um, you want to flip to the next slide? Thank you. So the water main um, expansion project is really generated off uh, the start of the airport work. Um, we're in 2021. The um, pipes in red there are the ones that were uh, installed under the airport project. And then the town still had um, some contaminated wells west of the airport and um, decided to initiate uh, installing water mains to serve those customers on that side. And so our project is looking at all the streets in green. Um, as Chuck said, we are trying to coordinate all of this work with GPI's work um, where necessary on Lovers Road, Okoa, and um, on Hansett. Um, all of these pipes were simulated in a hydraulic model by CDM Smith. And in 2022, we had a water modeling report that recommended eight inch and 12 inch in this area for um, fire flow and for water distribution. And also looking at the future expansion of the system potentially if um, required by the town. So this is supporting water mains to, to make sure that we do it right for the future. Next slide. So just a quick overview on the project and what it entails. We've got nearly three miles of water main we're putting in. We're serving about 90 uh, properties, 90 buildings out there. Um, with 20 hydrants. I don't have a count of the number of valves we're putting in. This project was um, um, submitted for an SRF grant of the state revolving fund. Um, it is received at least $7.8 million in funding, which is at a 0% interest rate because of the PFAS issues, which is a great interest rate. Um, I assume the town is probably playing, paying a little bit more than that in interest on its loans. Um, there is the potential under this state program also that some of the principal can be forgiven uh, depending on the number of projects they, uh, the state, uh, the trust actually has to fund and the cost for those projects. Next slide. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So we, the, the area where as the, the coordination that's going on between GPI and CDM and, and Smith and the town is looking at the areas in yellow where GPI right now is coordinating a three phase program that includes Lovers Lane, Orkawa and Monahansett for not only roadway improvements, but bike path improvements. Um, and so we are trying to coordinate as best as we can, trying to put the water main in an area that's not under pavement. Um, and it's a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out where, where the roads may or may not go or where they exist today as far as where we're putting the water main. And then on the roads that are in green, um, that would be Skyline Drive, Webster Road, uh, and the two extensions, the dead ends, um, we're looking at different pavement um, um, applications after we're done. We'll, we'll initially finish the work and we will trench pave where we do enter the paved area um, for Lovers Lane, Okawa, and Monahansett, and then GPI's project will finish those off. For Skyline Drive and Webster Road, we're looking at more of a, a final pavement restoration, milling and overlay. And then for the extensions, we're looking at some hybrid approach for those two roads. They're a little bit um, less traveled and may not need that higher end of uh, restoration. Um, the town is working on getting easements similar to the way they did with the uh, airport road property so that the town has the rights uh, to um, install the water main along those roadways and also to maintain them, which is important. Um, it's also important for the SRF grant. You have to have some sort of ownership of, of that uh, area where the water main is. Um, we are also including some limited drainage improvements. Um, some of that is along Nobadier Way. Um, also looking at Old South Road and kind of the connection intersection where uh, Airport Road is. Some of that drainage over in that area sometimes drifts over to Nobadier. Um, and then also at the end of Skyline Drive, as part of <clears throat> GPI's project, which John will probably go over, he's got infiltration basins in the area to pick up drainage. Uh, there are some emergency infiltration basins that uh, the town put in on uh, Skyline or on Okawa at the intersection of Skyline Drive. And we're looking at just installing some interim drainage along Skyline Drive when we look at uh, improving the road so that we can help out into the intersection of Orkawa. So uh, next slide. This shows you a little bit of the pavement conditions we've got today. Webster looks great. So we're gonna try to stay off it as much as possible. Um, Skyline uh, may need some road reclamation, sort of like what was done at the top half of it. And the two extensions are uh, probably limited travel, so we'll we'll try not we'll try to restore it as best we can right back to the original conditions or a little bit better. Um, and I think is that my last slide? Nope. Uh, I kind of discussed this a little bit. This is a summary slide of pavement restoration and how we'll handle it with the different as aspects of the road system. Uh, Skyline Drive is in red because it will likely require road reclamation because of the sub base is gone in some areas and we may smooth the road out and make it as equal to the uh, existing Skyline Drive um, roads. Uh, next slide. And so the last thing I wanna leave, with you, leave you with is that we have been working with Chuck, with Greg, trying to push this water main installation project along as quick as possible. Um, and the idea was really to try to get this uh, out to bid uh, as quickly as possible so that we can go to construction this spring. So we have an October 14th on Friday, we have to submit the SRF uh, application, which is starting the process in order to get approval by the state, review of the technical plans and specs, um, and then approval by the state in order to bid it. And then eventually it'll be an approval to award it and then get your loan. Um, one of the challenges we have, this is a schedule we put together probably two weeks ago, and we identified that one of our issues um, for the town, actually it's an issue for a lot of towns, is procuring the actual materials you're going to use. Pipe, hydrants, valves are now very hard to come by. And we identified that if we waited to award it to a contractor sometime in January or February, and they ordered the materials, they're somewhere between 12 and 20 weeks out. So we set up this schedule to look at pre-procurement where the town was gonna buy the materials themselves, 
they would still be reimbursed by the SRF program eventually, but we would have all the materials in theory ready for the contractor to install to try to maximize the use of that spring period before the summer high season. Unfortunately, uh, just two days ago, I think we had a meeting and Mark um, from the uh, water department informed us he's also trying to procure uh, materials. And um, he just found out that the corporations that we use to connect house services to the water main are actually almost 48 weeks out, if you can imagine, almost a full year. So while I'm showing you the schedule and we would really love to make it, we're doing some further investigations to see if we can find any suppliers to get us the materials we need. But we wouldn't wanna go in there two or three times to disrupt that water main to get services tied to it. So this aggressive water main project has already run into the schedule risks. The schedule risk of procurement and material acquisition is difficult. And I think right now we can honestly say we're looking at the fall of 2023 for installation of this, unless by some minor miracle someone's got some corporation sitting in their backyard. And then after a freeze thaw period, we, we finish the installation and then we'd have a freeze thaw period and we do final paving sometime spring of 2024, assuming we can get all the water main in uh, in that fall period. I think I'm done. Okay, Jim. Yeah, thank you. So that's uh, next jump to GPI. John Osorio is the uh, project engineer with GPI. I'm not hearing any audio from John. Yeah, we, we can't hear it either. Uh, unfortunately, John, we can't hear you. <laughs> we meet as a team twice per week, and at least one of us doesn't have audio. So, can you guys can you guys hear me? This is Brian Myers from GPI. Yes, we can hear you, Brian. We hear you, Brian. Okay, awesome. So I will jump in here and uh, help John out. That's why you always bring it back up, right? Um, Understudy. <laughs> um, okay, so GPI um, we did uh, we did give you uh, we did go over this project this summer. I believe it was July. Um, we had a presentation to the select board here. July twentieth. Um, July twentieth. Okay. So so this is um, just to sort of summarize this again. Um, so GPI is uh, providing the engineering services for the, the Lovers Lane, Orkawa, and Monahansett reconstruction. Um, the limits of Lovers Lane are from Boulevard all the way over to Old South Road and a little portion on the other side of South Road here. Um, on Orkawa, we go from Lovers Lane all the way to Monahansett, the whole all the way to that intersection. And then on Monahansett, it's from Orkawa all the way to uh, the airport drive near uh, Miller Lane. Um, it's about, in total, it's about 2.3 miles of roadway construction. Um, includes a uh, side path along the entire limits of the project. Um, there is a portion of the, the path that goes through on the northern side of uh, uh, Lover's Lane that goes through the state forest where there is uh, an existing um, a dirt trail. Um, the, um, so the, the, the biggest part of the uh, aspect of the project is the drainage. Um, we're updating uh, the drainage will be a closed drainage system, um, which will uh, completely remedy the existing ponding and flooding issues on Lover's Lane, Davcom, Orkawa, and Monaghanset. Um, there are multiple uh, drainage outfall locations 
um, but there'll be underground infiltration chambers along the uh, along the corridors. Um, you know, to improve water quality, minimize maintenance, and meet regulatory requirements. And they won't be visible, which is which is great. Chuck, I have a, I have a couple of questions. Um, when the side path, is that, that, that's a multi-use path, correct? Is it eight or 10 feet? Right, right, yes. So yeah, there's some of the terminology, multi-use paths, bike paths, side path. Um, you know, they're, they're all relating to the same thing, but, uh, yeah. that's a good question, Jason. Yeah, I'm curious about how wide it is. And then on Okawar and Monahasset, which side of the road will it be on? Or where did you find out was better for the whole project? The, I, I could show you on these next couple slides. The next slides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And, go ahead. And the next slide here. So on Lover's Lane, um, you'll see the path is on. The west side. So this is looking north on Lover's Lane. So you'll have. So what you'll have here, um, we have 20, 20 feet of, of, of pavement for the roadway here. Um, we'll have a separation of from the majority of it um, of a, a five foot, you know, vegetated buffer here. Um, and then we have a 10 foot path. Um, and that's all the way, it's, this is representative of most of Lover's Lane all the way to uh, where you get to, to Rugged Road where it hops into the state forest and it is much more separation. Um, if we move on to the next slide here, I can show you, um, this is representative of both Orkawa and Monahansett. So the same, uh, the same section here, but it's, sort of reversed. Um, so this is looking towards from um, Lover's Lane, looking towards Orkawa. So we'll actually be on the south side of Orkawa here. And if you're on Monahansett, it'll be on the east side of, of uh, Monahansett. Um, and same, same path, but it's a different uh, layout we're working with here. This is 40 feet versus the 66 feet we have on Lover's Lane, which is which is much much less to work with here on, on Orkawa and Monahansett. Um, so if we move to the next slide here. Uh, this was the summary that we gave you last time here um, of construction costs. Um, we're about, for Lover's Lane, we're about 6.7 to 8 million. Orkawa, uh, 2.3 to 2.8. And then you can see Monahansett is about 4 to 4.8 million. Um, and that's all I got for you. I have a question. Did we, did you skinny down Lover's Lane? Was that 22 feet before? Yeah, uh, yeah, we had it at 22 lane. feet and uh, we decided to, to bring it down further after discussion with, with the team here. Um, that's better yeah yeah question for you i'm assuming that this will take care of or address the problem of the drainage and the flooding and the standing water at dave kim and lovers lane correct and and one of the unique features of this project is that we are designing it with a capacity for the hundred year storm so that's a, a significant improvement uh, not to say that there won't be flooding because, you know, the frequency and intensity of the storms is changing, but we are designing, you know, with a long-term perspective. So that was uh, a poly that was a practice instituted, you know, by the previous DPW director. And, uh, I, you know, we support it as a great decision and, you know, want to continue on that, on that path. Thank you. And next slide will be Greg Timonen. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, this is kind of going over just how we're trying to best explain the project because it's multiple complex but very important um, roadway and water projects that are happening. So phase one, we're considering the water main expansion and we're considering it phase one because it's on a faster track than the other projects. 
<clears throat> um, that's because uh, we have a more prescribed timeline because of the state's SRF loans. So we're moving more quickly with it. And because of that, we're even kind of, we're working very closely now with the other, other, other projects in order to hopefully um, achieve um, as least disruption as possible and economies of scale. Since we're going to be opening the roads anyway, we're hoping that we can move along the other projects. So phase one, as we know, and um, as Jim explained, um, Jim Drake from CDM Smith explained on slide eight, um, may, may not actually be you know, it's in design phase right now, and we're submitting the final applications to the state with our SRF application. Uh, may not happen until maybe next fall, but it's still a faster process. And that's all very fluid right now with the supply chain, as Jim explained. Phase two, we consider Lover's Lane, and that is, as I think the chair just asked, um, it does involve a stormwater project for the drainage, the side path, which is the multi-use lane, as well as uh, road reconstruction. It, it will be paved. Um, that's phase two because it's already in design, as you know, on July uh, 20th, as Brian uh, from GPI mentioned, um, you had an update um, about this project. So it's already well in the design phase. We have some funding, but as the town manager mentioned, we will need to come back to town meeting for additional funding. Um, phase three and four, um, obviously follow this because they're not yet funded. We're, they're, they're in the plan. The town has already um, um, taken these roads, so the, the county and the town, but um, right now they're in out years in our, in our capital infra um, improvement plan. We're hoping to actually move that further up and that's gonna be part of our um, proposal to the town manager as part of our project team of achieving quality figures for this and going, for um, earlier funding for these projects. So once we're opening the roads, we don't have to then open up the road again in two years or three years. Um, and if where there may be trench paving, it's only down for months instead of years. So um, that is um, hope, that's what we're hoping to achieve as part of our project team. Um, part of this project too, especially with the water main project phase one, we have a uh, pretty intense and efficient um, easement team that um, is made up of um, Erica, our, our operations administrator, myself, uh, Ken Bogrant, who's our real estate specialist, um, Chuck, and um, uh, Vicki Marsh from KP Law. The uh, Skyline Drive and Webster are private roads, so we are actively seeking voluntary easements uh, for those projects, um, as well as two other locations elsewhere um, in the whole grand project area um, at the ends of uh, Monahansett and uh, Orqua, or Erica can correct me on that one. Um, and there's also gonna be potential that in phase four, the Monahansett area, Monahansett gets very narrow um, at a curve by the airport fence. And um, we may need to uh, take additional property there. That's just in design now, that is just being re uh, reviewed and researched. So that'll come back to the board later. Um, as far as public outreach, uh, the um, Erica has already displayed the uh, project website that uh, Florencia Rulo, our, uh, the town's uh, public outreach manager, created. And it's done in the multiple phases and it's loaded with information already. And it'll have all the presentations as well as any, uh, we have a poll on there already. We'll, we'll continually keep it fresh so people hopefully will be engaged through the website. But we do intend to have um, some public outreach sessions for abutters um, in November and January. The reason they're not scheduled yet, which we're still waiting to get those final ideas, those final plans, a little more knowledge of the projects before we go uh, to, to the neighbors. And as I mentioned about funding, uh, the town manager mentioned earlier, we're gonna be going back, hopefully this town meeting for additional funding for Lover's Lane at least. And, but we will be looking for hopefully expediting or moving up funding requests for the Orkawa and Monahansett portions. And I think that's all I have. I think next would be on to questions, I think, maybe not. Yes. I have just yeah. a comment. I hope that these uh, homeowners are giving the easements willingly because they uh, were very adamant for the town to take these roads at our expense, which is now we see as substantial. I would hope that they are giving the town uh, 
everything it needs for you know for the future whether that's easements for the pipes or you know more paths or anything we need i hope they are allowing us to do that because they yeah you know, i'll get it so because i was hoping that you know i was suggesting uh either they get the thing up to speed or we do 50 percent betterments on all of these because we knew the costs that were coming and so i hope that they are very helpful so and so if I can have um, Ken Bogran, the uh, real estate specialist, if he has anything to say, but yes, that is what we're um, seeking is voluntary easements. And we've just started the process through uh, Ken's office um, with the help of KP Law. And at, at this at this stage, uh, the work that uh, Erica and KP Law and I are doing is we're getting a significant, significant amount of agreement with respect to doing the voluntary easements. Uh, we have to go just through a little bit of process of explaining it, explaining it because what we're doing is we're getting an easement across the street. We are not doing anything with respect to their property. There will be a connection at the at, on their property. And because of that, they're very comfortable with it. And they're very comfortable with the fact that we're addressing the, the water issue uh, uh, for them. So, so far, uh, I think uh, it's fair to say that, I, I mean, I'm not aware of anybody that's turned us down. There are a number of people that had questions for us when we were able to answer their questions through, uh, uh, through, through town council, they said, oh no, this makes sense and we're, we're happy to move forward. Yeah, yeah that, that's great because otherwise we can give them the road back. You know, here you go. <laughs> sorry, I just want to clarify one thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. The easements that we're oh. seeking voluntary um, easements on, those aren't on any of the roads that we've already taken. Right. These are the private roads. It, those are the private roads only. So um, there's nothing to give back to the other people because we're we automatically already have rights in those roads to do that work. But I'm talking about the ones that we don't have now. They, you know, so. And uh, I, I think that's unless Chuck has anything to wrap up, um, that is. The overall scope of the very large and complex project happening west of the airport um, in the Surfside area. So um, we'll be updating the website, but also, of course, coming back to the select board um, with additional information, unless you have questions now. So when when the Lover's Lane project was presented to us over the summer, we had talked about using the funding that we already have to start one end of the project, and, and it sounds like that is no longer on the table from what you're presenting. So I just wanted to clarify that. So no, not necessarily. It, we came together as a project team because of that meeting. And when we realized that um, the water main project was also gonna be interfering with the timeline of the Lover's Lane project. So mm -hmm. um, as soon as we hope with additional funding, not even additional funding, that once we start the water main project, we'll be able to then immediately start with the lover's lane project okay great thanks good, good question brooke this is a great example of of bigger projects that that umbrella multiple departments multiple project managers multiple companies vendors so a job well done to to you greg and chuck and everybody on the team thank you there were 12 internal members on our team as well as mm -hmm. Um, several members from GPI and CDM Smith and KP Law. It's all I, them. I just sit and nod at the meetings. <laughs> well, I, I, and I think people can be uh, critical of the town, but this is one situation for sure that the town has been very proactive with the water situation and working on these roads. You know, it may not be quite as quick as people want, but it's, you know, we usually move at the speed of government and this is the pretty quick speed of government. And I think it's being done really uh, professionally and well. And for that, I think the staff deserves credit. You know, so thank you, thank you. Yep. Team effort, total team effort. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.